is like 50% of it and the money is the other 50%. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, of course remember two of these or rather two other players from Copa will be going to the Premier League so do not miss that. That's going to be great to see. But we're jumped into the game. Map's going to be Coda. We have our first player here on the bottom right hand side playing for Root. It is none other than Cats. And his opponent here in the blue spawning to the top left. It is going to be Birada managing to tie things up on Vani. Is he going to ride this wave of initiative or will he crumble to Cats? That is the question. Yeah, Cats, of course, a very potent player. Now, let's see what Birada decides to do. Going for a bit of a nice little extractor trick here. Some players do like that. I, uh,. Actually, we don't see enough players do that nowadays, so I think it's pretty cool. Imagine if you would have let, just not cancelled. You go ten, for the 10 gas first. Yeah, into pool. That would be pretty crazy. Overlord and then go just like 9 pool speed. It's like the quickest speed you've ever seen, but it, you only have like 6 links to use it with. <laughs> so it's uh, kind of hard, I guess, to do any super serious damage versus any standard safe pool timings. Yeah, I think it wouldn't really be a possible build, but it would be cool to see if anyone could pull it off. Now, both players decide to go for that hatch first, so no one really afraid of uh, of those kind of early pulls. There are a few variants that we talked about already, and they are pretty scary, all of them. But uh, this time, it's all fine and dandy. Yeah, fairly slow start to kick things off here. Cats, a couple of drones behind. Adding them in and now. Gas pool. For a red Zarg, no gas taken yet for Birada. Yeah, just delaying it to slide bit. There we go. Oh, there we go. We'll go down. It now, always happens like he's not doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, you can actually delay quite a bit, so you have to wait until. You have to kind of wait until the pool is almost done to know for sure if it's actually going to be gas. So you can still go for kind of a delayed gas that still. Uh, and just go straight for the lie if you want to. But Cat went for a very early pool himself. It was I think it was a 15 hatch, 14 pool. So although I said they weren't really afraid of early pools, I think Cat wanted to get away with a 15 hatch, but still was afraid of losing to Birada with no pool. So he kind of pulled off the uh, the 14 but, defensive pool there. So, so it goes a bit like half measure, half measure. Yeah, kind of. Kind of move. You still yeah, you get know, those uh, early queens, though, so it's fine. Oh yeah, that's that's actually a pretty big deal that you have those two queens at the uh, at the very start of the game because not only if you start getting that creep spread going, you can wall off the front of your ramp because you actually need to drop one, but you oh. can also start banking a little bit uh, of that extra energy, which is really important if you're getting all in. Wait a minute here. So cats right now still mine with three in gas, gets the Evo. It looks like he wants to go for the Kerpers. And uh, the question is, is he going to uh, go for Carapace then just speed and just go for it? That's pretty interesting. Oh man, this is, that's a really, really cool build actually. And well, you know what, I think it's going to work fairly well. Barada going for that Baneling Nest. I want to point out, if Banelings one-shot Zerglings with plus one Carapace, they bring them down in the reds, so you need two. And while it might, it might be easy for some people to say, well, you know, it's really easy to go find that second connection. It's actually not as simple as you'd think it to be, especially not when running on only a single gas as we see Barada doing, so you can't actually have a, that crazy amount of banelings to do those kinds of moves. You need to have every single connection be worth its weight in gold. And now as you speed as a follow-up, still mining gas, we're going to see... We're going to see, um, like, a Ling Bane kind of... I don't want to say all-in, but it's kind of a super high-pressure build that really needs to deal damage. Because you don't really have a great follow-up right away. And depending on how far you want to go in it and how much damage you really deal, you can go either into Roaches and follow up with a Ling Roach, which is still really strong. But you can also like get away with a third. You can try to go for a Mutus afterwards and still have a really good hold in the game. And we see now Barad is going right into the lag, gets this third base. Cat's getting the one of his own. But is he, is he going to be able to actually hold on to this? 
uh, Barada that is. I mean, he, his, his his initial idea with this additional gas, I feel, is to go right into Mutas again, and he's only going to have these unupgraded Zerglings on the ground to go with this. And, well, Katz, he's, he's nearing the point of attack. He is. Let's see, though. Barada right now has a few more links than the Katz. So Katz not really having the units he needs for this and going to be forced to... Uh, Cancel his third, loses the drone as well, so gonna have to bring a new one. But uh, now speed finished. Soon enough, we're going to see that Carapus upgrade finish up as well, and that's gonna help Kat immensely in these fights. Be rather really quick pulling back, and we'll just keep on cracking out units right now to defend that third base, just like we saw in the previous game. And there we go, once again, three times in a row. That's a spire. Yeah, so, Barada re really wanting to get as much as possible out of the Mutalisks, but now, plus one Carapace is in play. It's a very subtle move here. So, if Barada clicks his opponent's units, then of course he'll be able to identify what's exactly going on, but if he doesn't, he might be taking engagements that aren't actually favorable to him. We're going to see one Bane to kill two, not the best trade for Barada, as you did talk about that third. No longer possible to cancel, so Birada really needs to hold on to this one. And well, he has a lot of links, but not that many Bane links. Remember, Birada still loses all his links to one Bane. Yeah, and Katz is bringing this hatchery down into the red. It is going to fall at the end, and Katz is going to look to try to bust through here. That's a question. Get some damage onto this spine. Birada now adding in more buildings to wall off. Queen at the front, spine, uh, Bane links behind here. So for now, it's gonna—it's looking a little difficult for Katz to break through, so he's going to back off for now. But behind of this, of course, remember, he's establishing his own third base, and he did kill that third hatchery of his opponent. So good move here from Katz. Plus one armor, really helping out. So Biron right now is getting Mutas out to control the map, just as he did the previous game, and behind he's getting that Roach Warren for that follow-up Roach push. But Katz right away going to Roaches now. He's getting plus one missile attacks as well, so he's going to have one run roaches, which is kind of the, uh, which is kind of a natural transition now for the, uh, Carapus. Uh, Katz, though, continuously staying on his opponent's side of the map. And he's gonna go and look for another third base, and he's gonna see nothing here. So he's probably very happy about this, and now he knows, well, you know, I'm ahead in bases, I'm gonna be ahead in the economy. Oh, the bailings! Oh my god, cats with those bailings, just crushing, getting getting every single zergling from Birod, and now he's gonna get right into the main. Yeah, and he now knows about the double E with the Roach War, and he comes in, sees no upgrade on that spy as he's going to kill off quite a few drones here, I believe, and also the queen goes down, maybe one or two more queens here will be killed, and that's a big deal, actually. Yeah, now he's going to start doing some work on these drones. How much did he get there? The first Bailings connecting with all of those Zerglings right to the face. So they all went down, gets three Queens. That's going to slow down the Injects and then gets a couple of drones. Twelve yeah. drones lost in total right now, Zerveg. It's a lot of damage, I have to give you that. And well, Cats right now has to defend though. Those poor cores don't really help against Lings. But with two queens and actually even more coming down, it's going to be six in total. And the links coming out from the hatcheries should be absolutely enough for cats to hold on. Cats once again, though, go straight into the infestation pits. I'm not a big fan of this. He saw the Roach Warren, the double Evo. He should know that he doesn't even need infestors at this point. Like, sure, there are a few muters out, but he should know there should be no more than like five to nine muters there should be more and this is just four muters like they wouldn't even tickle roach yeah they become completely irrelevant so i definitely agree with you there like should just focus on going for superior roach numbers and then try to go for a frontal engagement and wear his opponent down with just good old brute force but he's sending these links across the map again on a mission and do you know what i think he's gonna go and try to hit this third base once again and if he can kill that i think that's gonna seal the deal in this game Birana smart enough does block off so these links don't get in, but Cat already surrounding that third base and only four muters, not really enough, and that's also going to show Cat that there are only four muters, most likely at least, and well, kills off the third for the second time, probably will try to get out, it even gets in here, and it will try to get even more damage, this time of course, a lot of links once again. Well, this is terrible for Barada. This queen is going to fall, and once again, losing those injects, losing anti-air, losing a couple of drones as well to this. So, cats all over the place. 40 supply up. 
Roaches on the way, plus two attack on the way. Infestors soon done. So Cat set up right now looking really good. And he's still up one base. I don't really see any way for Barada to come back in this one, I think. Well, he's going to try his best. The thing is, Barada tried to go into Infestors himself, and I'm not a big fan of it. If you if you don't think your opponent's going to go super heavy into Mutas or Roach Bane, I'm not a big fan of going Infestors first. But we're going to see Cat do that, and then going to Hydra. So it's going to be Roach, Hydra, Infestor, which is kind of a great mid late kind of late mid game composition and uh well he's so far ahead in army at this point and even in economy and bases that it's going to be very difficult for him to even uh lose this game to Barada. it's going to be a challenge like he'll, he'll actually have to make an effort to lose if he wants to give this one away and you know because i don't think he's going to here in the copa america because he makes it to, to the rhines of eight and well that's one step closer to that wcs premier spot and he really wants it right now. Cat has a lot of infestors. He has a lot of roaches. And he can easily push just across the map here. He could kill for 30. He could go up to the natural. There's only one spine crawler here on the logo. And that's not going to help all too much. No single spine. Four infestors. I guess Birada with 2-2. Two -two, that is nice. But when you don't have the numbers... Like we said, Roach Wars re really is a numbers game when it comes down to it. It's just going to be so hard to challenge this, this cat, so he's waiting for these additional units. Maybe I'll guess it, I guess he'll just go hit a max and then go for it. Since he's ahead in economy and he's getting uh, like the Hydra tech, waiting for just maxing out and then pushing would probably be the smartest thing because that should be the technically the strongest thing he could do especially since Birada needs to be droning up a third base you see right now seven drones in production that's seven uh, roaches less just about that he would have had and now we see cats pushing across the map here that's a big freaking army oh man it's absolutely massive and he's gonna push down this ramp can get caught by fungals two first fungals here are pretty good here from Birada and just to follow up with a single one but no more than that. And then, of course, Cats with his own investors here. Barada has to be equally as careful. Now, look at this. He's splitting up his army. He's going to go up to this high ground, break down these rocks, and then maybe try to hit a sandwich. Very smart move by Cats. He's going to need this. And uh, it's going to create almost like a, a great arc, or maybe even a pincer attack. Could even try to go for third base and the natural at the same time to trap the army completely. But here we go. Cats is pushing in. He's going for... The uh, perfect R kill almost. Well, the fungals, though, a great fungal coming down from Birada. Get yeah, catches every single investor, but it's just way too much from Cats. Yeah, very smart move from Birada to back down there to sort of nullify that massive arc that we saw Cats with. But the supply is just so heavily in favor of Cats. The investors going down. He's going to peel up into this third kill that for the third time. And the massive fungals on this ramp. Infested Terror is also being added in. And that's going to be it. That's going to be enough to overwhelm Barada. And that means Cats will be the first player out of Group B to advance into the rounds of eight of Copa America. So Cats makes it out of Group B.